evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Mahoning Drive-In Theater, the largest single-screen drive-in in the United States. We're certainly glad you could be with us this evening. And don't forget the concession stand is open with all kinds of great things to eat and drink. Welcome to Mahoning Drive-In Radio. We are back with another episode talking to one of our staff members about their their lives, their loves, their trials, and their tribulations while working at the Mahoning Drive-In Theater. This week, we have Kelly. Kelly, how are you? Oh, I'm just fantastic. And how might folks know you if they've been to the Mahoning before? Um, they will know me from the lot. I'm also at the ticket booth. I also did the radio twice as Alley Gator. <laughs> so that and uh if they were at bruce campbell i was the one running around in the rain so <laughs> you were the one person who got wet that weekend oh boy did i <laughs> once in a while it gets so wet on the lot it rains so often no let that, that dissuade anybody who's never been there but i often think that in addition to you know a little cart uh you know maybe a rowboat maybe a raft might not be a bad idea just, just expedite getting around and keep your shoes Keep your shoes dry. Bring your boots, bring your uh, raincoats. It's muddy. How did you first discover the Mahoning Drive-In Theater? Um, I have friends that go to the drive-in, so they were like, oh, let's go to Bill Murray weekend. So I went to Bill Murray weekend as my first drive-in, and I saw the stripes and um, a Groundhog Day. Funny enough, as we record this, it is Groundhog Day on the calendar. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you you you've been you started as many of us did as a customer at the Mahoning. Oh hell yeah! You found yourself part of the Mahoning Drive-In family. How did you mm -hmm. become a, a staffer, as we say, with great respect? Oh, um, I had a friend that worked at the uh, at the drive-in, Ashley, and she asked me to if I wanted to um, either volunteer or work there, and I was. Uh, I needed another job, so I was like, yep, give, put me wherever you want. And what is it that you do when not working at the Mahoning? For for work, for fun, for, for exercise? and I work at a printing place. I do all your direct mailing, so you're welcome, everybody. I do that. I do uh, pre-press, so I make all the plates for the presses. I know how to run a press. I do, um, I print all the names and all your private information on the little stuff. So I do all that. And is the direct mail industry still a thriving business? It's an annoying business. <laughs> thriving, I don't know, but it's really annoying. But I'm, I'm part of it. <laughs> the people who work there or the people who receive the good work that you do? Oh, God, it's for the people that receive the beautiful work that we do, it's annoying. I get it too. I like, I'm, we definitely print a lot of the stuff that we get like in my own mail. And I just, I'm like, no, I don't care. <laughs> so the next time you see Kelly, think of Finger Hut and Publishers Clearinghouse and know that a person who cares touched that envelope. <laughs> it's more like Capital One. Capital oh, One team. Okay. Yeah, we do big, big boy stuff. <laughs> Do you have uh, a long history with drive-ins? Like, did you go to drive-in theaters growing up or at any point in your life before the Mahoning? Uh, no. So I'm from northern New Jersey, and there's uh, we have other theaters, like regular movie theaters, and um, but no drive-ins. My uh, mom and my grandparents used to go to drive-ins down the shore, but I never went to one until I was about 23 or 24. Interesting. I know New Jersey has one remaining drive-in, uh, the Delcy, because the first time we went to the Monster Mania convention and had a booth for the Mahoning, people would come up and say, oh yeah, there's just one, it's the Delcy. So we learned that day after hearing it about 30 or 40 times that there's only one left in New Jersey and it's the Delcy. Um, it, and it's funny, they used to be everywhere. Like not every town had a drive-in, but every town had a drive-in that wasn't that far away. Yeah, I, they just uh, built one in Newark, and oh. it, yeah, I just read an article about it, and I was like, oh, that's so cool, and it's Newark, New Jersey, it's, it would be interesting to see that. <laughs> I, it is cool that, for an unfortunate reason, drive-ins have made a pretty big comeback this last year. There's new construction I keep reading about here and there, it's not like, it's not like the boom was back in the 50s, but it, 
places are getting brand new drive-ins and it's it's kind of cool because people have rediscovered how much fun it is to sit under the stars and watch a movie and eat ham hocks or something oh yeah that and like with covid you can't be inside so might as well be outside and i'm all about it why not and you are mostly outside when you're at the drive-in almost entirely how how much how rough a gig is that when we have you know bad weather and cold nights there um the uh the only really bad one was at the um bruce campbell because people got stuck in the mud and me and the rest of the lot crew had to uh get people out of the mud and it's just the mud it mainly when it rains other than that um if you hide in the ticket booth, you're not as cold. <laughs> That's true. There's a nice little heater in there. Oh, yeah, that and in the digital booth. So, like, the outside crew can find places to hide during the movie. But, uh, I mean, bring bring gloves when it gets to, like, um, to October or November. Otherwise, I mean, it's pretty warm the rest of the season. You said you didn't attend a drive-in until you were in your 20s. So have you been that much before the Mahoney? To any drive-in? Any, anywhere, yeah. No, oh, um, I'm more of a movie. I like movies. So like I used to go to AMC a lot. I used to go to the uh, Amaze Theater. Um, just regular movie theaters. And watch, like I have, I have almost all my ticket stubs and some of the movies I'm like, I saw this? Okay. I used to do that. I, when I was a kid, I kept ticket stubs for a long time. And when I was smart, I would write down on it what it was because this was like a local theater that just, it just said admit one. And I found my ticket for the first time I saw the Goonies when it was new. And that was kind of wow. cool. It, it, ticket stubs, it is funny. It, like, you know, I'd have this movie review gig and I'll go back and look at things I reviewed and I have zero memory of ever watching it. And it's just like, I guess when you see enough, it just kind of, the brain only has so much space. Yeah, like I saw apparently a little one said uh, I saw the possession or the possessed or whatever. And I was like, I don't remember seeing it. Couldn't tell you anything about the movie, but I saw it. <laughs> you get the ticket to prove it. Yeah. So, so what is what would you say is your favorite film or your genre or some movies that you just love and watch and go back to over and over again? So I have a tattoo of Back to the Future on my leg. So Back to the Future, I think, would be my favorite. It's like a fox. It's Marty McFly dressed up as a fox on the hoverboard from the second movie. So that's on my leg. I'm trying to think genre-wise. I like independent dramas, like, primarily. But I also like horror films. I'm, I'm getting deeper into that. Um, but I think independent dramas like Mysterious Skin and The Doom Generation and uh, Brick. Like those are some of, the, some of the movies that I enjoy. So that's the stuff, that's the, sort of this, <laughs> speaking in old outdated terms, that's the section of the video store you would go to if you were by yourself on a day off. Oh yeah, Blockbuster. I remember Blockbuster and um, Hollywood videos. So my grandmother would take me and I would go into the independent or foreign film section and that's how I saw a lot of my uh, movies, like uh, Brothers at the Head, which is a weird Siamese twin movie, <laughs> and they're in a rock band. I don't know that one. What do you remember? What sort of like what country that came from? I think it's a British, like a UK movie. So I definitely I saw it when I was before Blockbuster went out of business. So I must have been like maybe twelve or thirteen. So you've you've been on the Mahoning staff for one season now do you have any any moments or memories that really stand out from this last year the 2020 season that you'd care to share that you can legally recount or share with anyone here i got a funny one from bruce campbell i um so i was up front at the exit making sure only people were coming in that were supposed to come in so that including bruce campbell and his um uh, Wrangler or whatever you call it. And I, with another volunteer, I was uh, walked away because, you know, traffic had died down. No one was really in. And then we just saw a car pull up and go right for the exit. So we ran, we pretty much ran the car. Like, get out of the way. We chased the car down. And then Bruce Campbell was like, I'm Bruce Campbell. Like, <laughs> we're trying to get in. And I was like, oh. Well, you know, it's COVID and he had his mask on. How am I supposed to know it's Bruce Campbell, the chin himself? 
I was going to say the chin wasn't poking out under the mask. No, he had big glasses on. He had his mask and his uh, his person was like, oh, no, we're like, you know, trying to get in because we're, you know, Bruce Campbell. Oh, well, my bad. And then when I went to get my picture taken with him, I, I apologized. And he's like, oh, I'll fucking show you. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, that was pretty cool. That was pretty funny. I like that. And I, I like walking up and down all the rows, just getting people with their headlights, like, I'm going to get you. You were the, the lot enforcer? Yes, just like many of the other people there. We have our little uh, jean jacket vests and hats, and we're just, we're coming for you. Now, did you find that the people whose headlights were on, did they, did they not realize they were on? Or I know a lot of modern cars, it's really hard to turn the headlights off and still run the radio. Mm -hmm. A lot of them didn't realize it was on, so they just turned it off real quick. And some of them, they couldn't. So you got to put your uh, e-brake on, but you got to like turn your car off, put the e-brake on, then turn it back on. And that rarely happened where people don't know how to turn their headlights off. We have so many people, so many people this season, especially that had never been to a drive-in before. Um, mm -hmm. it, it seems like every year we get so many people who've never come out or haven't been out since, you know, the days of speakers on polls. And it's a little bit of sort of educating the public as to how it all, how it all works. Like I, I've heard, mm -hmm. heard um, Pat in the past say that people would drive up to the ticket booth and say, okay, where do I, where do I go now? <laughs> it's like, well, yeah. you drive in, <laughs> and it's all in there. But uh, yeah. I, I don't think less of anybody who doesn't know this stuff. It's just, it's such a, such a foreign idea to sit in your car and watch a movie for so many people. Yeah, and I like the the regulars because then you can just be like, oh, you've been here? Well, just, you know where to go. Pick your spot, get your spot. And that's usually after your first time there. That's how I, at least, when I'm at the ticket booth, I'm, that's how I treat the customers. I'm like, oh, you've been here already? Well, then you can just go. <laughs> I mean, after I see their tickets and whatnot, but they know where to park. They got the spiel once, they don't need it again. And we have a lot of people who come so often, well, they become employees if you come on. <laughs> it's like a punch card. You come a hundred times, hey, you can help park cars now. Do you have a preference between the ticket booth and the lot or anything else you've done there? Uh, no, because you get to rotate. At least I rotated um, doing the trash, doing the uh, ticket booth. Ticket booth is fun, but it can get overwhelming when you're trying to get all these cars in and they keep asking you questions and then you're trying to say it short, sweet and to the point and they're still confused. Or you gotta tell them, hey, you see that pothole? Don't drive in that. And then they do and then they get stuck. Yeah, there is that section of the lot that usually is ringed by cones that is sort of like the Bermuda Triangle of the Mahoning Drive-In where <laughs> it's, it's, a little, it's a little rough back there. <laughs> I know that we're trying to fill those in this year, so. No more potholes. I'm excited about that. Woo! It'll just be ramps. Ramps that you hit at speed, and if you can do a corkscrew in the air and land on all four tires, you get a free medium popcorn. Oh, uh, dude, just to recreate that scene from Ferris Bueller, just <laughs> get all that air. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I also make all the vegetarian food. That's also what I do with the drive-in. Jeez. Oh, you do? Yeah, I make all the vegan and vegetarian food. That's why there's so much of it this past season. And people really appreciate that too, this year. Oh, and I'm doing it again this season. So oh, fantastic. Any any previews of potential menu items? Um, I'm gonna, for the staff, I'm gonna make empanadas and I'm gonna give you guys samples of them and then maybe we can like meat ones, vegetarian ones. I'm gonna try some empanada stuff, um, but pretty much vegan chili, regular chili. Um, we're experimenting with some fried chicken. Uh, and I'm gonna make a Philly cheesesteak empanada also. So we're we're doing some interesting thing. I'm experimenting at home. That's <laughs> fantastic. Much. The 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 test off season test kitchen that you have there. Oh hell yeah. That and I'm because you know, we get some of the schedule of what movies we're showing and I'm trying to think of certain uh, vegetarian specials that we can work off of 
or even for like opening weekend, what what are we gonna do for the uh, Willy Wonka and the uh, the Wizard of Oz, which I've never seen. I've seen Whoa. the Wiz. Wow. I've seen the Wiz, but not the Wizard of Oz. It looks so good on that screen. If if we have a good night, um, you know, the the sun sets behind that screen and that movie starts, and it's just it's beautiful. So I, I'll be very curious to hear what you think. Yeah, you know, seeing this movie that you know pretty much everybody has seen, but you. Uh, yeah, no, they were having a Michael Jackson marathon one day on VH1, and they showed The Wiz, and Diana Ross is Dorothy, and Michael Jackson's mm -hmm. The Scarecrow, and Richard Pryor is The Great and Powerful Oz. So I remember that movie. That movie's cool. Very funky. I think <laughs> you're giving me ideas. We should sit down and have a chat after you watch The Wizard of Oz and see what you think of it and what you think of it as compared to the first visual version of that story you saw. Yeah, and I saw that when I was maybe eight or nine. I I was home from school when they were doing that Michael Jackson marathon. So yeah, and I also saw another one of his ghosts. I saw Ghost, um, the movie that he, the horror film that he did when I was a kid too. Michael Jackson's an interesting man. So the 2021 season, that which was your first season, as we've mentioned, was 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 amazing and wonderful and, and chaotic in so many ways. Uh, we're going into the 2021 season and beginning in April. And uh, I don't know if you've seen some of what we've we're planning to do, but it's pretty incredible. Um, do you have any any thoughts or words of wisdom or inspiration for our listeners uh, about the the season that is about to unfold upon them? Oh, watch out. Keep your eyes open and make sure to be updated on what's coming because I'm excited and I know other people are pretty excited. So it's going to be a cool season. I'm excited. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Kelly, for talking with us. We'll talk to you much more on the lot, obviously, but also on uh, the podcast. And we thank you for listening to us at home. And this is Mark for Mahoning Drive-In Radio, and we will see you at the drive-in. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks again for coming out tonight to the Mahoning Drive-In Theater. We hope you'll come back and see us again real soon. The exit is on the right-hand side of the screen at the front of the field, and most importantly, have a very safe trip home. Good night, and God bless you.